Well, okay. Katie, you just got back from a pretty interesting trek, and uh, it's good to see you in one piece. Um, after trips in around the mountains of Idaho and relaxing a little bit in the islands off of Washington State. So, uh, we deserve all of it. Tell our listeners a little bit about this kind of work experience trip that you went on. Um, I signed up for and went on the Sierra Club service trip to into the Selkirks of Idaho in the Panhandle uh, out of a town in a forest ranger station called Bonner's Ferry, a uh, small town. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we were doing trail repair and a campsite rehab were the two jobs that the group of people did. Um, How many people were on your team? How did you get ready for this? How did you pick this site to work on? Like Michael, three questions at a time. I prepared Start by the preparation. I prepared by <laughs> standing up and working uh, many days a week this summer at the garden at the semi gardens. Bless their hearts for keeping me uh, busy. I walked with my girlfriends on the lakefront and with uh, forty pounds of rocks in your pack. No, unfortunately, never did I put forty pounds of weights in my pack when I practiced. But I did have three practice walks with maybe 20 to 25 pounds. The reality was 40 pounds, however, and uh, I knew that was going to be the uh, trickiest part, was going in with all the equipment on my back, And uh, but I made it, and uh, I didn't fall down or cry or, or give up my song. pack to somebody who could carry it. I just, one foot in front of the other is how you do that sort of thing. And uh, once we got up top, and put our tents up, it was time to do the work. The work was, um, you know, things with using things like Pulaski's, you know what that is? Uh, it's some kind of a digger thing. Yeah, yeah. A good <laughs> man. Yeah, a couple, it's got two X fronts on it, uh, facing different directions. Something called a McLeod, which I had never seen before, and I... Sound like a TV series. Sheriff. I kept calling him a kid, a McCutcheon, a McCreary, a co I called it different names all week long. I was, you know, I, my job was to entertain. Um, and I generally pulled up that part of the bargain. Um, we worked really hard on this trail stuff. I mean, it, it was very, very hard work. And the range and age uh, of the participants is 20s to, no, I was not the oldest guy, and there was a guy, he was 71, um, and he's done this many times, and he was really wonderful. He actually was slower than me coming up the mountain, but that's also because he knows his speed. Um, uh, so anybody can do this, uh, and Sierra Club actually offers scholarships in order to recruit young people. And so one of our young people was on a scholarship, and she had done that before. I have done this before, too. Um, what? How many of these, uh, these repair operations does Sierra Club run, and what other groups do it? Numerous, numerous, numerous. You can look online, Sierra Club service trips, and pick a place you'd like to see, because frankly, that's the way to go to see it. Uh, if they are low uh, cost. It's really, they try and keep the cost just to your food and the travel to get you to the place. Um, various shuttles, etc. because we went in probably 20 miles on a four-wheel uh, drive road before we started hiking. And um, uh, so the first time I did this, I used it as a way to see Denali National Park in Alaska. And that was in the 80s, and it was the most fantastic thing I ever did. One of you know, I've done a lot. Of, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, no, it was wonderful to get me to get to be in that incredible place that most Americans should try and go to sometime or another. Um, Sierra Club service trips got me there, and then I also once did for something completely different an archaeological dig in southern Illinois on a on a service trip, which taught me about you know measuring out little squares of earth and going through it in a completely different thing, but camped out for that as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah, what? After all this hard work each day, yeah. how many days was it? Uh, it was a six-day trip total in, in in there. And what did you do for rest and relaxation, and how was the food? The food was great. The food is always great. Ask anybody who camps. When you eat at 6,000 feet and you've been working all day, 
it all tastes good. It tastes but, wonderful. But it was really good. Um, uh, there was a lake, Trout Lake, which is where we were repairing trail uh, to it and from it. Um, and But the lake was always there. And at the end of the day, we could jump in. Jump in. It was frigid, of course, because it was high altitude. And you were talking to me uh, before the show about you noticed uh, you didn't see a lot of wildlife. And we're not sure if that's because of the height or because of the fires probably miles away or, uh, I, I don't know I don't know either um, there are fires uh, this is fire bears, season any moose, no bears, no coyotes, I did not no see wolves. I did I did not see bears I did not see wolves wolves generally don't allow humans to see them um, but they were there they were there there was track uh, from moose and uh, deer I did see deer uh, closer to town actually um, that's where they hang out now and <laughs> maybe uh, I heard pika, and one of our one of our members actually captured the cute little butter on on camera. I'll post that picture when I find it. Um, yeah, it, it was unusually devoid of uh, wildlife, actually, um, and it might have been the fires. The fires that were near nearest to us were in British Columbia, just 15 miles north of us was Canada, and so there was there were there was the haze. Um, but the weather was great, and as I went for the latter part of the trip to visit with friends in the San Juan Islands, I did pass over some fires that were starting on the eastern slope in the Cascades in Washington. Give us, uh, our listeners, a, a, sorry, my, a little impression of the San Juan Islands and the community there. Okay. Um, the San Juan Islands are uh, a, a whole slew of them. Um, in the Straits of Juan de Fuca. Juan de Fuca. I want to say that. Juan de Fuca. Um, that was actually a name given by a white guy uh, explorer um, to those straits, uh, naming it after a Portuguese explorer. Um, Juan de Fuca. Yes, that would be that. <laughs> so what were you looking forward to that didn't happen? Ooh. As you rebuild and turn That's a herb ball. That around. didn't, ha I, you know, one of the secrets to being a good traveler, no expectations. Take what you get. <laughs> no expectations. I, I expect it to be out and, and experience the wild, and I did. And, uh, you know, getting in and out of a tent for a week, I was very uh, grateful that I could do that uh, and, you know, pick up my thing and go off to work. We did whistle while we worked a few times. We did call our leader Snow White as we went off, hi ho, hi ho. I mean, well, you have a lot of fun with the people who show up for this trip. People who show up for this stuff are great people and uh, work their tails off, have a great work ethic. Um, everybody fits, you know, finds their niche and works it. Uh, we also repaired a campsite. In addition to doing the trail work, we brought a campsite back to work, which was like planting forest which was unusual. Um, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't have that, whatever you just asked me. <laughs> Come on. I didn't have that. The, I, as, I uh, did see the eclipse well, out there. And? And it was fantastic. I loved it. I mean, I loved everybody looking at the same thing at once. I kind of felt like uh, when I saw um, Tom Skilling. I loved Tom Skilling's <laughs> reaction. Because some people get get a little emotional. <laughs> he goes, well, I'm going to pull it together. I'll be right back. I loved it. And it's like, thank you, our little, shaman, our little shaman weatherman dude. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping that uh, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's a big deal. 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 It's a that, uh, that, that it might mean portend something positive coming up. Yeah. Gina and, and I around our campfire this week, we took our grandson on the Kettle Moraine. We're reminiscing on trips past, and I think one of our favorite trucks was kayaking off of Belize uh, in 08, right after, right after Obama was elected. And I think what I admire you most is, I probably have trouble doing that same kayaking trip today. Uh, just for the physicality of it. Here you are off trucking through the mountains and all. Um, I really admire yours being able to take this kind of a service trip on. 
Well, thank you, Tom. I, I, it's, a, it's a motivator to stay in shape, is what it is, actually, to uh, be able to do stuff like that. Well, before we, we go on to some other things in, this, in the Life in the Heartland show, um, what about uh, the, the current president talking about scaling back, or actually his environmental... The National project. Monuments? Yeah, what, about, oh, yeah. what are your thoughts about it? And you guys oh, didn't no. know about that until you came out. Oh, no, I, I mean, we've been, that's why I went. I, that's why I signed up for this, was his uh, relentless uh, attack on the environmental progress we've made in the last 40 years, um, and his promise to continue that. That's what pushed me to say, okay, it's time for me to do another one of these, even though it had been since the turn of the century that I slept in a tent five minutes in a row, or much less seven. So, yeah, uh, it, not a surprise, and um, Greenpeace has got a petition online right now, and one of the people I left in uh, Lopez Island was uh, actually doing a training the day I left uh, for her kayak activism that is happening up in that area uh, shortly. Um, so yeah, everyone should be signing the petitions and uh, talking to, uh, the other thing, just I'll sl uh, slip this in there, this is supposed to be a national or international water week starting tomorrow. And so you've got the phenomenon of senators in Wisconsin and Michigan and Illinois all writing their constituents about uh, particularly uh, dealing with the Great Lakes uh, restoration uh, money that are, is supposedly they're taking away. They want to take it all away, um, which they're going to hear about from Canada as well because it was part of the compact, the Great Lakes compact between the two nations. And, uh, I'm sorry, but 45 cannot dismantle that. 